Hi, welcome back to the VU Meters YouTube channel. I'm your host, Rich, and today we're going to be talking about this. The Rhino High Fidelity series of television marquee moon. This has caused a little bit of a controversy in the VC, but to be honest, what doesn't these days? So I'm going to give you my impressions on this pressing. I'm going to compare it to an OG and the Chris Melman pressing. But first, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant about shipping in my experiences with the shipping and handling of this album. So stay tuned. All right. So thoughts on shipping in general. Maybe I'm a little crazy, but if you told me something cost $38 and $5 shipping and handling or $45 and it ships for free, I would take the $45 with the free shipping. I know, I know, I know. It's $2 more, but still, I just like feeling like I'm getting a deal or getting something for free. One of the biggest gripes that a lot of people have with this series is the shipping. The fact that you pretty much almost always have to pay for shipping. Occasionally I've seen free shipping over $100, but that appears to be sporadic on Rhino's website. So not only is it the cost, but it's the quality or lack thereof of the shipping. So I'm going to walk you through my experiences. When I bought this album, I bought this album just by itself, $39, which is a great value. They charged me $8 for shipping and handling, which I wasn't thrilled about. And then when I received it in the mail, I got this. So you can see it's like thin, flat crunched corners on the box and there was literally no additional padding on the inside like this is how it came no bubble wrap no cardboard no nothing now up until this point every rhino high fidelity series album i got was packed similarly uh, but fortunately i didn't have any issues that wasn't the case with this one when this one came before i opened it from the shrink wrap i noticed there was some creasing on the back which had me initially concerned I'm like, well, let me cut it open. Maybe it's just damage to the jacket. When I went to cut open the shrink, I noticed it was incredibly tight, like much, much, much tighter than other albums. So when I finally got it open, I looked at it and even just giving it a quick glance, it looked like it was sort of a bull warp where it was <laughs> curved up on the second side of the album. Um, I took a look at it, looked at it under a light. I'm like, let me just sit it down on something flat. I sat it down on my turntable and I'll put a couple pictures in here. So this will show you what side two looked like. So now I wasn't very happy because one, I had to pay for shipping. Two, the shipping was $8. And three, the album arrived damaged. People have had a lot of gripes about Rhino customer service. I fortunately haven't had to deal with them and still haven't because I have a record flattener, more specifically the record pie. So I threw it in the record pie and I'll put a picture in here. And you can see that it got it nice and flat. So as far as that goes, it was pretty easy for me to fix myself, but I'd imagine it'd be pretty frustrating if you didn't have a solution on to how to get this record flattened, um, especially after waiting so long to get for it. I know these are very limited. The car is sold out and now sells for like multiples more than what it originally cost. So I understand how some people would be concerned with that. I was, fortunately, I was able to fix the situation myself and not involve Rhino. But I do think that ultimately, if you're going to charge for shipping one, you should do it as well as places like the InGroove or Acoustic Sounds do it. And two, you should have an option. Other than this sporadic $100 free shipping, um, have another option, maybe like $75, because they release these two at a time, and you can go in and buy both of these albums from them, and you're still getting stuck paying for shipping. Which brings me on to another point. I mean, they go direct to consumer, which is perfectly fine. They want to cut out distributors. That's their choice. However, if you're going to do that, it ultimately means you have more profits, which means you could do a little something for the consumer, like free shipping on any of these titles, or if you're going to pay, one, make it cheaper, two, have a free option, and three, if people are going to have to pay, you have to do a much, 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 much better job than this. So that is my little mini rant on shipping. Now, we're going to listen to the albums. So we're going to go track by track, album by album, and I'm going to start in the order in which they were released. So we're going to go the OG, the Chris Bellman, and now the new Rhino High Fidelity pressing. All right, and now on to the pressings. So we're going to start with the first one that was released, the US OG. This one is definitely cut the hottest out of all of the pressings. I had to turn it down a few notches when I was switching from other pressings of this album. This kicks off with See No Evil, OK Soundstage. Separation was good, but there was almost no bass, which kind of is 
the same throughout this entire pressing when compared to the others. Uh, Venus, there was a little bit more of everything, but not much. I'd say overall that sounded a little better to me. Friction had a really super clear, realistic vocal. It was like that in the room sound that I really enjoyed. Um, the only thing with the trade off with that is the drums sounded really, really dry at the end. And then onto the title track, Marquee Moon. Bassline was super weak. Uh, right channel guitar was overpowering at a lot of times, um, even during the choruses. But this one, again, like this pressing, had the most present, forward, fleshed out vocal. So moving on to side two. In Elevation, uh, the guitars ring a lot more in this than other tracks, so it had the reverb. I wouldn't say that it was sort of that liquidy, wet, lush reverb that most guitar players like. Vocal projects a lot more, as does everything within that range. Guiding Light, kind of more of the same, more guitars, and more vocal, a little less of everything else. Now on to the last two tracks of this album, this pressing. Uh, Prove It. There's a lot more of the arpeggios. Uh, really wasn't overpowering. It balanced out really well. Uh, the bass was decent. I actually preferred that version of this track the most out of all three pressings. And same with Tom Curtin. So Tom Curtin, uh, the drum isn't as bad, and the bass was a little bit faster, but not necessarily deep. Nice wide sound stage that also manages to project out towards you. I enjoyed this version the most on the last two tracks in the album out of all three of those. So all in all, this one, Cut Hotter, uh, seems to be more optimized or mastered for more presentation of the vocal and the guitars. A uh, lot less bass, and I think as part of that, hot mastering, uh, the dynamic range wasn't there as much. So, you know, if you look at the swings at the DB meter between the quiet and loud parts, uh, that range doesn't move up and down as much as it does on the other pressings. Now, moving on to the Chris Bellman. So this was actually the first pressing that I owned of this album. I did go out and get an OG after listening to this one. So I had already had both of these when they announced the Rhino High Fidelity series, but I still bought it. So the Chris Bellman, uh, overall, uh, this is mastered and cut a little bit lower. It's not as hot as the OG. I had to turn the volume up on my amp a few notches, but this one starting out, see no evil, slightly more bass, but it is at the expense of the vocal. So that is a little bit of a trade-off that you get on this one. Uh, Venus, I felt that this one was noticeably better than the OG. I felt it had a much wider soundstage, more detailed imaging, more bass, but not at the expense of the vocal, like on see no evil. At Friction, uh, this was the biggest vocal, I'd say, out of this mix on this side. It had better left-to-right balance, which was something with the OG. Sometimes it was kind of like right speaker heavy, especially when the guitar was in there on the right side. Um, but all in all, the bass was better. Still a little lacking for my taste on Friction. Marky Moon, much, much better bass. Left-right balance was good, but a trade-off was for that huge, expansive vocal, right? That is not here on this one at all. Um, but I'll take it. I actually like this presentation better than the original. I do like the drums at the end and the bass feel a little more fleshed out and a little more realistic to me. Moving on to the second side with elevation, wide dynamic range. Uh, it did sound a little more compressed than the other tracks on this pressing. Guiding Light, it was probably more like the Rhino than the OG, which we'll get to next in terms of presentation. Prove It, uh, it was similar to the Rhino, but I felt that the Rhino version did it better. But again, I kind of felt that the OG did it the best out of all three. And with Tom Curtin, it, again, it sort of balances like right in the middle between the OG and the Rhino. Little less soundstage than the Rhino. Vocalism pronounces the overall as the OG. Um, but overall, I'd say that's kind of where this one sits. For me, it's... Sort of in the middle, if you want to trade off between the things the OG does well and the things the Rhino do well, I think the Chris Bellman is the one to go with. Plus, it's readily available and it's by far the cheapest, so definitely a pressing that I recommend. And last but certainly not least, the Rhino High Fidelity series. This one is cut by Kevin Gray. This is the newest pressing. When comparing this to the other pressings, it is cut the lowest or quietest sort of out of all three. So the OG is cut the hottest, then the Chris Bellman, then the Rhino. So with the Rhino, you are turning it up the most out of all three. One problem that you can have with that is if your vinyl isn't super quiet, uh, it can introduce a lot of background noise. Fortunately, that's not the case with this one. Still very quiet pressing, even with having to turn it up. So starting off with See No Evil, uh, Soundstage Imaging, widest out of the bunch, which are two things that I really like. Uh, noticeable bass increase, 
it's not as much at the expense of the vocal as the Chris Bellman. So in the OG, you're going to get the most vocal, and at the Rhino, you're going to get the next most, but you're going to get more of everything else. You're going to get more soundstage, more dynamics, better imaging, better bass. Uh, Venus, even better. That's one thing I noticed after listening through all three of these, the see no evil to Venus. It sounds like Venus was just cut and mixed and mastered a lot better to begin with on the tape. I found that that always sounds better. Friction, this is sort of the Goldilocks copy. There was nothing missing here. I said on the Chris Bellman, I felt that the bass could have been a little bit more. Uh, this one sorts that out. So it's a song you can just kick back, relax and listen to and not really think about. Marky Moon, this is my favorite presentation of the song. Better bass on the opening line, bass line and drums. Uh, right guitar is still a little bit strong, but uh, vocal much, much better than the Chris Bellman. Uh, much better bass than the Chris Bellman on this one. Uh, even the bass on like the guitar solos, it felt like just all across the spectrum on the other instruments, like the low end just feels more sorted in this pressing. So overall, I'd say side one of this, if I had to pick just one half of it, this would be my favorite album, side one, easily. Moving on side two with elevation, wide, crisp, great sort of liquidy reverb, great centered, balanced vocal, uh, guiding light. Vocal was a little more recessed, uh, but the guitar sounded great. It did get a little busy and the imaging kind of started to break down a little bit when the piano came in and the piano and the guitars were all going. You could feel that imaging start to like slip a little. Uh, prove it, uh, left channel arpeggiated guitar was set back more in the mix, which in the OG, which I liked the best, I kind of liked that it was right there and sort of balanced out the guitars nicely in the left and right channel. Moving on to Tom Curtin, it was the biggest soundstage on this side of this pressing of the album, but all in all, uh, I like the OG better for the last two tracks, but... My overall take for this one is I do like this pressing. I feel that in terms of the cut, compare, comparing it to the other pressings, that uh, side one, I feel like far and away, it blows them away. I do feel like the side one presentation of this is better than side two. So in summary, I listen to all three pressings and I love all three. Honestly, I had the Chris Bellman first, listened to it, never had an issue with it. Found an OG, listened to it, never had an issue with it. I don't have any issues with the Rhino High Fidelity either. If this is an album that you like, you probably don't need all three and being crazy like me. If I had to pick one, I would pick the Rhino High Fidelity. I feel like for the things that I like, the wider soundstage, the imaging, the deeper bass, I feel it's more balanced left to right channel. I feel like the dynamics are better than the OG. Uh, that would be the one that I would pick. If I could only keep one, though, I would keep the OG because the OG is the OG and you can't get any more original pressing. So that would be the one I would keep. If you didn't have any and I had to suggest one, I would go between the Rhino or the Chris Bellman. And it comes down to price. Honestly, you could find the Chris Bellman cheaper than you could find the Rhino right now. I think it's a good balance between things the Rhino does well and things the OG does well. But again, with any of these pressings, if you like this album, whatever pressing you have, listen to it, be happy with it. I think it's a great album. I enjoyed getting to listen to all three of these copies over and over and over again. But when I think about why I prefer what I prefer, uh, one thing I couldn't help but notice, and I'll put some screenshots in here. As I go through this process, I listen to these albums in all different orders, all the way through one album up against the other, certain sides up against certain sides, and certain songs up against certain songs, and I put it every single way that I can think of. I take a lot of notes, and I go back, and I challenge myself with some of the beliefs or feelings that I had at the time. I do this over a number of days to make sure that I'm removing any bias and being objective as possible. But one thing I noticed when I kept switching these over was the dead wax. So if you notice on side one, I felt that the Rhino in side one was almost a, queen, a clean sweep. Uh, for me, I felt that every single track on that was the best version of that song. When you look at the dead wax, you can see that the Rhino has smaller dead wax than the OG in much, much smaller dead wax than the Chris Bellman. Well, if you flip it over to side two, where I actually preferred uh, Prove It and Tom Curtin the best on the OG... The OG has really, really tiny dead wax, like the smallest amount of dead wax out of the three, followed by the Rhino and then the Chris Bellman. But the Chris Bellman, if you look at both sides, has significantly more dead wax. Um, not something that you really notice right away when you hear it, but if you think about, you know, albums like 
the vaunted Led Zeppelin II RL pressings and that thin, thin dead wax, you know, it could be mean, could mean that the base is cut deeper, could mean that it's cut hotter. Um, I think in the instance of this, you see that the Rhino High Fidelity has much deeper base and the OG is cut hotter, which probably explains why those two have a lot less dead wax than the Chris Bellman cut. So that is my take on television's Marquee Moon shootout with the Rhino High Fidelity, the Chris Bellman cut, and a USOG. This is the VU Meters YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Rich. If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I personally respond to every single comment. I love getting comments and responding to them. I've got a lot of great suggestions from the comments. So you keep them coming up, and I will keep the content coming. Thanks. Bye.